One of our potential clients wanted us to take a quick look at growth opportunities. Where should they target growth? I had a specific region of the world in mind. It was sort of onshore, and these were the countries that they suggested. Zooming in here, we're going to have a look at Iraq, Libya, and Tunisia. Can't be very specific about the company in question, but the idea was uh, they were looking onshore. They wanted to leverage uh, rig and drilling expertise and a lot of experience in fractured carbonates. They didn't want anything too shallow, nor any deep, high-pressure, high-temperature kind of uh, opportunities. They wanted to access uh, or close access to a pipeline or refinery or a tankering opportunity and attractive economics. We thought about 10 million barrels would be a good target size of uh, an undeveloped accumulation. Looking at uh, sweet crude oil, mid-range API gravity, possibly open to, uh, to to gas at a similar sort of size. Operatorship, well, preferably with a 30 to 40% equity and uh, some partners. We did ask, well, are you interested in field redevelopments? We're very interested in field redevelopments. So using these criteria, we started hunting in Trove. So uh, quickly to give you a, an overview of Libya, a map on the left shows uh, lots and lots of oil fields in different basins. And we have covered Libya in a recent Trove video. And on the right here, a license map, so we could have a quick look round. Now, there was very little time left to have a look at the uh, the joint Tunisia-Libya offshore bid round. And that was a sort of a discovery that straddled the, 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 uh, the country there. But time is very, very short, and we weren't sure that uh, we'd be able to get access to a data room. And we really wanted to kind of understand this opportunity. And it had a very checkered history, so... We kind of thought, mm, that's not going to work. But we did alert them to the uh, Libya 2024 licensing round, which is expected to take place in Q4 2024 or Q1 2025. It's uh, launched by Libya's uh, National Oil Corporation. They're targeting to get back to 2 million barrels a day production. Now, you can see in recent times, it's been quite erratic and, and generally a lot lower than the, uh, the 2 million barrels per day target. So lots of uh, reserves, but not as much production. And as we've discussed before, there are two administrative regions here. There's the GNS in the west and the GNU in the east. Libya, 10th ranked country in terms of remaining reserves. But you can see the reserves to production ratio means that at the current rate, there's over 339 years worth, a lot more than a lot of other countries on that list. Let's look at Trove and find out more. Let's start by taking a quick look at regional. Now, this is our regional setting here. And in regional, we look at sort of the plate tectonic settings, the structural evolution, basin formation, the sort of the big picture stuff. Then after that, we uh, maybe look in more detail at the structural elements. And here you can see all the various basins, all the structural trends, all the sub-basins all listed. Uh, take a look at the uh, stratigraphy and from that learn where the source rocks, the reservoir rocks and uh, for each province in the region. And then we look at the assets that we hold in Trove and here's a list of the assets for Libya and that's a continuation. We've got lots of material on each and every one of those assets. How Trove works in seconds. So here's an example of the Mesla. So when you see the name Mesla, you click on the field name and it takes you into a detailed tab here where you've got information, maps, cross sections, various write ups on what's happening, parameters, sizes, infrastructure, location. So it can kind of get a, a, good, a good handle and a good feel as to what this opportunity is for a screening. Then we can turn and we can just at the click of a button go across and look out next door to, to Libya. Let's look at uh, Tunisia. And you can see we can get a general overview here, the licenses, the tectonic setting and all the, uh, all the structural elements. We can also look at uh, source rocks in and across uh, the Tunisian region. We can look at the stratigraphy. And then we can look at the play types. Now, uh, here's, a, here's a section here. Multiple stacked reservoirs. Have some been overlooked? For example, this one here. This is uh, potentially a trap. And likewise, uh, perhaps drilling deeper underneath some of the existing fields. Opportunities exist. Now, there's the assets. We've got 193 fields, discoveries, and, and blocks across Tunisia. And again, by clicking on each of these, 
we actually have got lots of information on all the individual fields and discoveries. Our subscribers tell us that they like case studies. Well, we like case studies too. So we'll show just how flexible we are. We're going to jump up to another country. We're going to jump to Algeria and we're going to have a look at another opportunity. And that is the Hassi Masud. It's in the Gadams Basin onshore, discovered back in 1956. If we look at uh, Hassi Masud, it's a, a super giant oil field, which means it's uh, about 9 billion barrels of oil reserves discovered in 56 on stream 58. It's produced over half a million barrels of oil per day back in the 1970. And at times throughout its history, it's actually been constrained by OPEC quotas. On the field, there are over 500 producers. The reservoir is a Cambro Ordovician sandstone reservoir its uh, natural depletion was the initial recovery mechanism then miscible gas reinjection and uh, some water injection so wag it produces some associated gas but it also imports gas to actually enable the uh, the wag so here is a, uh, a cross section come, comes out of Trove here. You can see the Mediterranean Sea going up and over the Atlas Mountains and then into the, uh, into the basin here. And you can see the location of, of Hassi Masud. And uh, on the map below, again, just showing it's sort of south uh, southeast of uh, Algiers. Here's a, a cross section showing the formation. And again, another look at the, uh, the basement high with these overlying uh, Cambro Ordovician sands which are the reservoir in terms of uh, burial history it was buried uplifted during the uh, hercinian orogeny and uh, this is the uh, the source rock which is the uh, base silurian source rock and uh, you can see that during the mesozoic and then into the cenozoic it gets buried down here to the order of uh, 4000 meters so that's uh, much maturation late mesozoic into cenozoic times the uh, stratigraphy you can see, well, it just shows uh, a more detailed breakdown of the Cambro Ordovician, and um, the majority of the reserves in Hassi Masud are associated with this R1 unit. The sands typically 175 to 240 meters thick. The initial all water contact was down at around about three and a half thousand uh, meters. Reservoir temperature 120 to 132 centigrade. Reservoir pressure about 7,150 psi. Now, oil column up to 310 meters you can see it's a very light oil it's a uh, very low viscosity it's also uh, an undersaturated oil and quite a low sulfur content the reservoir we talked was Cambro Ordovician. These are quartzitic sandstones. They rest unconformally on a granite basement and they're overlain by the Hacinian unconformity. The best poroperm sandstones, well, they're found in the low stand deposits, but because of the quartz overgrowths, typically porosities are only of the order of 4 to 5%. This is enhanced, of course, by natural fractures and faults. So um, there is some relationship between permeability with, with clay content and type, with uh, the worst permeability coming where you've got uh, fibrous illite and chlorite-rich zones. Diagenesis and cementation predates oil emplacement. Uh, and then in terms of EOR, well, we know that there's the gas injection, the water after gas, or WAG as it's known, and uh, also the use of horizontal wells actually increases the recovery from this otherwise rather tight reservoir. Here's a picture. It shows that the, uh, the field is actually quite compartmentalized. And if we look at the uh, injection gas saturation map, now this is quite some years ago, but you can see that the uh, saturation of gas, it's, uh, it's different in all these different compartments different levels of uh, saturation and gas flooding within the oil column. Now, here's the total production. This is, I think, global data. So uh, there isn't values on the, the y-axis, but you can see here at the start of the, uh, around about 2024, the, where the blue arrow is, you can see that we're about to go on to quite a, a steep uh, decline uh, through time. So that's the forward projection. Not entirely sure why the history of the field in the past has some of these uh, spikes in it, but um, you can see that it's been producing for a long, long time and it's probably coming towards the, uh, the end of its life. It's certainly in the late mature stage. Now here's our entry within Trove 
and you can see we've got lots of material, some of which we've used in this video here today. So what are the next steps? Well, Trove, we told our client, has collated all the data and it's ready to go. You can hit the ground running, look at uh, any country you like, whether it's Iraq, Libya, Tunisia. We can register interest with the regulatory authorities and actually assess cost of data packages. We can screen opportunities, high grade assets. Trove uh, also contains a list of all the companies that are active in the region who might be suitable as, as JV partners. And we can do this all anonymously, uh, so the company doesn't really have to put its head over the parapet, as it were, if that's preferable. And uh, we can do that sort of global trawl. We would consider a, a success payment contract basis, but uh, we've done a number of those uh, recently. That's something of interest. So in summary, well... You've heard it here so many times on these videos, Trove, our databases, huge amounts of data. We also have consultancy services where we can work with client personnel or, or uh, offer specialist services. We deliver on time, on budget, and we leverage our extensive network and expertise. We've got the global knowledge base and we put technical teams together at very short notice. So next steps, well, that's opportunity screening. So if you've got some opportunities and you want to have them screen, get in touch. Thank you for watching. I hope you found that interesting. Please hit the like, subscribe and ring the bell. Hope to see you back on our channel before too long. Bye for now.